Welcome everyone. We'll get started in just a few seconds. Okay, we're live, Jackie. Hey. Okay. Welcome everyone. Welcome to the Toro Siete Museum of Contemporary Art. My name is Keith Tomlin and tonight I'm going to take you on a guided tour of Jackie Rosen's new exhibition with us in the Toro Siete Museum. We're going to talk to Jackie. She's there. Wave to wave to the crowd, Jackie. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Let's see. Let me show Jackie because you need to speak to show up. There she is. Hi. So everybody. she's waiting. <laughs> so for those of you that are not aware or familiar with the Toro Siete Museum of Contemporary Art, we are an online fine art museum. We feature over 30 artists from over 12 countries of the world, and we have over 70 exhibitions that have been curated, especially for you. And we build 3D interactive exhibitions that can be viewed from anywhere at any time from any device. We recommend that if you're home and you can pull up our museum on your website, you can access us from going to our main page that's available at torosiete.museum. And that's where you'll be able to access all of our exhibitions, browse through our artists, look at the different versions of our exhibitions and discover what we have for you. Tonight, we're gonna to be talking to Jackie Rosen who has just joined our museum. We have a new exhibition of her works for you titled An Imitation of Life. And you can find Jackie's exhibition by going through our menu system, looking through our main page, but you can also get there directly by going to jackie.torosiete.museum. And there you will find her exhibition homepage where we will be featuring her exhibitions. We will also have videos there of content related to our exhibitions. We're gonna be filming um, some exhibition videos where we will be inside of her exhibition talking about her artworks. And we also are selling many of the works you see in this exhibition in our museum gallery store. So there will be links in her exhibition to the individual works that are for sale, but you can jump directly to our shop by going to shopjackie.torosiete.museum. So let me introduce you to Jackie. Jackie Rosen is a fine art painter, primarily doing mixed media and acrylic work on canvas and on wood. She has a long background in the art world. She formerly, before becoming a fine artist herself, worked in museums, curated for museums, worked in art galleries. She owned a very successful luxury boutique for many years and gave it all up to pick up the brush herself. And so we are excited that she has. She's been super successful with her works, exhibiting in many places and we're Honored to have her part of our museum. So Jackie, say hello to everyone. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Keith, so much. Thank you both for having me in your beautiful space in that beautiful museum. And what a perfect time to have a virtual space in which to, uh, to highlight artists. That's right. Yes, I mean, we are, we've been doing this for a while now, but this is a time where people are really paying attention to the concept of displaying art virtually. The advantage of having a virtual museum is that even if you do have a physical exhibition, your physical exhibition is limited to a specific place and a limited period of time. And so the exhibitions that we build in our museum stay in our museum. We will be building upon these exhibitions and we look forward to having multiple exhibitions of Jackie's work. And so we also can show work that has been sold as well. And so we are creating an archive of our artist journeys here on our site. So one of the things I wanted to do before we jump into this actual exhibition is I wanted to give everyone an orientation on how to connect to the exhibition and what it's like to navigate our 3D exhibitions. So I'm gonna switch it over now to take us inside of Jackie's exhibition. And we're gonna take a little journey through the exhibition and then we're going to talk with Jackie about the works. I wanna encourage everyone that's watching on Zoom. We would love to have your questions. We would love for you to participate via video if you're interested. 
All you have to do is let me know in the chat or you can click that little button to raise your hand and that will let me know that um, you have something to say on video. If you don't wanna be on video, you can just type in your questions. We're also streaming this on Facebook. So people that are watching on Facebook, please let us know if you have a question on Facebook, type it into the chat and we'll try to get to your questions and answer them live. If we don't get a chance to catch them all live, we will go back after the broadcast and, and speak with you directly as well. So let's go inside of the exhibition. I'm going to pull up. If you go to jackie.torosiete.museum, you can follow along from home. You can click on her exhibition and it will take a few moments to load. If you're viewing her exhibition from a mobile device, then it will prompt you to download an app from the App Store, uh, which is a free download. And then you can return back to the page and click on the exhibition and it should load into the exhibition. So here we are inside of the exhibition and I wanna just give a few navigation controls to orient you how to maneuver inside of the exhibition. You can use the mouse, you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard, you can also, there's some other special keyboard commands that let you tilt up and down. At the bottom of your screen, you will have a catalog browsing. So you could select through the works that are in the exhibition. And to access a particular work, you can simply drive up to the work with your mouse or keyboard controls. You can click on the work in the catalog, but you can also just simply click on the work with your mouse and the system will automatically take you to that work. Once you're here, you can also zoom in closer with the arrow keys. You can get very, very close, to, which is something um, that's really exciting. You can see all the detail and all the texture, especially with Jackie's works. And also there's information on the work on the side of the work, but in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, which is probably blocked by uh, the Zoom window, but there is a, a, um, a thing you can click on here to show you more information about the work. Share this work with someone by clicking on invite. And if the work is available for sale, there's also a buy button that will take you to our gallery store. When you're looking through the exhibition, there's also other commands. Over on the left-hand side, we have the introduction. If you wanna read the introduction to this exhibition, um, which in this exhibition, we have Jackie Rosen's work is exemplified by bold strokes, strong color combinations, and intense gestural mark making. She makes quick instinctual decisions, takes risks, and is spontaneous while being mindful of her aesthetic. And here's a quote by Jackie, and we'll get her to explain this for us a little bit more. I'm a creative mathematician that adds, subtracts, and multiplies my mediums. My work is raw, multi-layered, authentic, resulting in many of the traits that reflect my responsibility. My personality, I'm sorry, my personality. So let me just browse through here and tell you one other feature of our exhibition viewer. We also have the ability, you've noticed that there's some shadow people that are inside of the exhibition and this is to give you a sense of scale and perspective of the size of these works. If the people get in your way, um, you can make them go away. If you don't like the people, you can click on the high people command in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. And you can also hide this catalog by clicking on the, the lower left-hand corner of your screen as well. So let me just pull around here a little bit and show everyone and also um, let us know if you have questions but I'm going to give a little bit more of a little tour around the room, and then I'm going to talk to Jackie about what is all this math that she's talking about. And I must say, Jackie, though, math is my thing. So that's one of the things that I really love, that you use math to talk about art. Thank you. So tell us about it. What is, what is the math about? OK, so math. Okay, my works are about, like my quote had said, adding, subtracting, multiplying, sometimes even dividing. And what that means is obviously I take a raw canvas 
And what do I do? I add materials. I add mediums, I add papers, I add, um, you know, whether it be charcoal or I even use oil, watercolor, acrylic, um, mediums to make things textural. And like I said, papers and so forth, and a lot of um, sticks and gouache. Concrete, you use and you use. Yes. yes, I even have concrete. Um, so the point is that's my addition to the canvas. Then I do deductive painting. I take away. Okay, so you have a canvas. It's not done because I need to take things away, like in life. I add to my canvas the things that I like, like I add to my life the things that bring me joy. Um, you know, whether it be people, types of food, activities, whatever, I'm adding them and continue to add them. So I add the things that I like to my canvas. I take away the things and I hit delete on things, on the, um, the particular things that don't, you know, don't turn me on, don't do a darn thing for me. I have to take them away. And I do that with my work, whether it be gouging, sanding, you know, I look, I stare, I spend a lot of time looking at my work. So that would be taking away. Then when I see marks, like I was just telling you about the number four, yeah, yeah. I continue to multiply them and multiply them and multiply them over and over and over again. Because again, that brings me you know, happiness. So it, it's a lot more than that. You can read about that on my website and I know you have more information than that, but it's about, that is my philosophy of life. So my work is an imitation of my philosophy, my life's philosophy. Yeah, that's a great segue into the title of this exhibition because of that as your method for painting but as you said it's also your your method of life you know yeah. it took me a long time to get there okay to figure out you add what you like you take away what ain't working okay and then right. you multiply the things that really bring you happiness and it's just as simple as that and i realized it took me a long time to figure out my why why do i paint like that a lot of people ask me why are you constantly adding and taking I'm like, I don't know, I gotta put it on, I gotta dig it on, you know, and I turn it all four ways so that I make sure it's a really good abstract and it works in all forms and so forth. And um, I realize that's my personality. Yeah, you know, Lori. Like, good, Lori Arbell said. Says that she loves that metaphor that's applied to your process. That's really nice, that's really nice. You know how Coco Chanel says you get totally dressed and when you think you're perfectly perfect, you take off one piece, yeah. you know, and then you walk out the door. Yeah, well, That's yeah. me. It's not perfect until I have to take something away because nothing is perfect. So the way in which I decide whether a painting is finished or not, that's a good is, yeah. Yeah, is I, because they're so busy, there's so much going on. How did I know that without this mark, right? Right. It was finished. Why wasn't it finished without this mark? The moment that I say to myself, I don't want to sell that, I want to hang that in my house, done. That's when I know, complete. And I, I spent a lot of time looking, but go ahead. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's a great analogy because we kind of do the same thing at the museum. It's like, how do we know that we want this artist or this art, would we buy it ourselves? Then that's, a, that's you know, you have to go with your gut and yeah. that's what it tells you sometimes. Yeah, like I'm like, this is okay, this is okay, I'm okay, never works. It's, it's got to really resonate with me. So let's take a closer look at the piece that's behind you in the music. Oh, okay, room. here we go. Because we were talking about the marks, right? That right. you make, and this is a great example of one of your works that has more distinctive- Yeah, it's right there. Oh, okay. To it. Yeah, so this one is called Riot On. This is acrylic charcoal spray paint and oil pastels on canvas. This is that's, a pretty large right. Right. 60 um, by 40. Yeah. Okay, so Riot On is about, you know, the craziness, the chaos 2020, um, the riots. It's a very urban kind of a piece. Um, there's graffiti in there. There's a lot of underlying spray paint. And if you look closely, you can see quite a number of marks, whether they be half circles and so forth, a lot of squiggly lines. There are a lot of the number uh, four. You'll see four marks in, in probably every one of my paintings. I'll have four dots, four pulls of my hand, um, you know, my fingers across the canvases, 
just four marks, um, or I'll have 18 marks, because in, uh, in Judaism, 18 is high, is good luck. But this is so chaotic. This is about, you know, the crisis that we're in right now. And as we notice, there's not a lot of negative space because I don't have a lot of, um, I have so much in my mind right now, as we all do, that there's not a lot of breathing room. So you'll see the works that I've done for the last three or four months, they're very similar in that there isn't a lot of room to relax. Yeah. There's, a lot, there's a lot of tension here, but there's a lot of promise because the colors are bright. That's right. The colors are fun. Um, and that's my piece. There's always, um, in the last three months, you'll see a lot of squares. In the upper left-hand corner, there was a square there. And it's kind of like you feel, you feel like you can't get out. But in my squares, there's always a small space, if you look, that you can get out if you can find the way. Okay. You have to know how to find the way. Yeah, we'll have to start looking at those squares really closely. We have a few <laughs> questions popping up. Okay. Uh, we have a question. Um, I don't know who this is from, but, it, but they say, Hi, Jackie. I'm curious what motivates you. And does all of your artwork have a message or significance? Good thing. What motivates me? Um, really interesting. Unlike a lot of artists that I know, there's not a day in the week that I don't want to paint. I paint seven days a week, nine to 13 hours a day. I don't know. It consumes me. I don't want to be doing anything else. You know, I, I'm eating standing up. It's really what motivates me be creativity, the, the ability to, first of all, play. Play is a really big part of this, okay? Um, because it's intuitive, it's instinctual. So you have a, a lot of artists don't like a blank canvas, right? I love a blank canvas. Like, what could this possibly be? What do yeah. I feel like today? Um, be, you know, what do I feel like creating? What is my color palette? You know, you tune in to what it is that you want to express that day. And so my motivation just comes from within. I have no idea how this happened to me, but I got bit by this bug and I got bit really bad. Yeah. I mean, the other half of the question was? The other half of the question was, does each, does all of your artwork have a message or a significance? Yes, there's always something in the artwork that I'd be happy to talk about anytime. Yes, yeah. um, you know, abstraction, can be really, really difficult. Um, but, okay, how do I say this? So abstraction is difficult because a lot of people will walk through and do the museum crawl, as we all know, and just walk along the wall and say, oh, let's focus on that because I don't like that, I don't like that, I want to look at that, I want to. Every, the more you don't like something actually, the more you should spend time looking at it and figuring out what you don't like and what you do like. But, um, what was the freaking question? <laughs> <laughs> Does all of your artwork have a message or significance? And you answer. Yes, yeah, sometimes. Yes, yeah, sometimes. No, yes. Yeah, sometimes. yeah, yeah. Because I think when one thing that people are that are people new don't think it would, but it does. Yes. Yeah. I think people that are new to discovering abstract art sometimes um, think, "Wow, this is just random stuff here," but. I think when they actually, if they were tasked with actually doing it themselves, they would realize how difficult it really is to do something abstract. I mean, yeah, anyone can throw paint on a canvas, literally, right. but right. for it to come together in a certain way um, is very challenging. We uh, have- position, yeah, you're, everything, everything comes into play, even more because people want to be, they want to be critical of it. So people have to learn about abstract art and what makes a good abstract. And the first thing, like I said to you before, if you turn the painting four ways, all four ways, and it's balanced and the composition and form is right, you got something, which is a hard thing to do. Yeah, we have a question from Jill. What artists inspire you? I am inspired by both de Kooning's, um, William and Elaine, uh, Gerhard Richter, big time, um, I, you know, because I looked at art for so many years, it was over 17 years that I was in the art field, that it's kind of like my own amalgamation 
of people that I've seen and loved for so, so long. Yeah. Um, but so many artists inspire me, like George O'Keefe, The Color Palette, very inspirational. Um, Banksy, not Banksy, um, Basquiat. Yeah, yeah. I did a show with Basquiat. I didn't personally do a show with him, but I helped put together his, one of his shows a long time ago. The street art thing really, really is, is a big deal to me. Yeah. Uh, the urban thing, because good art is, is usually a reflection of the time in which we live. Yeah, absolutely. But street art is really big now. And you can see that in your work, for sure. Um, we have some questions related to that. Okay, I, great. Yeah, I want to also get back into your exhibition, but I, I love that people are asking questions. Um, we also have a question about being quarantined. Has that helped your creativity? Um, in the beginning, I went through, you know, I wake up happy, I go to bed happy every day. Then the quarantine hits, and all of a sudden, Jackie ain't so happy. <laughs> Jackie ain't so it really hit me hard. It was really, I, I was scared for yeah. all of us, for the world and the way things were being handled. And this overwhelming fear of dread and I didn't want to paint. Well, that lasted about three or four days. Um, and then when I started painting, I didn't stop. And my paintings became a bit more chaotic, like the one that we just saw, a bit right. more tight, a bit more aggressive, maybe you would say. Um, with my marks and, and they weren't this, they were this. You know, I, I had, um, my emotions showed up in my canvas most definitely. So quarantine, it has given me even more time to paint. I didn't always paint these many hours, right? I had more of a schedule. Um, yeah, it's given me a lot of time to work on my art. And for that, I appreciate, I appreciate it. Yeah, we have some similar questions along those same lines. Um, sure. You touched on this a little bit, but someone is asking um, that a first a statement that they love that you're manifesting what's actually going on in the world that that's reflected in your art. But how do you keep yourself from getting too dark, especially during these precarious times? Um, a combination of um, hydrocortone, uh, Xanax and Valium. Okay, you crush them up. Okay, <laughs> you make these, I'm only kidding. Okay, so I really kind of can't go dark. It's like, yeah, I, I, I like try to go, wait, the darkest one in there was the one that I just, that we were, wait, which is the darkest one? Hang on. Okay, the darkest, most moody. I don't think I have one. These yeah. were most of these, like the last one I showed you. Does that, would anyone even read that to be dark? No. No, because I was going to actually say that if I didn't know what it was about, I would think this is like a busy, emotional i mean you can feel the the movement and the emotion in it but it doesn't strike me as dark in fact one of the ones that probably is not dark to right. me is a little bit more dark and that's oracle okay. it's just because it's literally a lot more black in it than right. right literally yeah. dark that was one of the first my very first that was the first year i painted that was really really new work let me show that one real quick um, since we're talking about it. Yeah, can you then, believe that one is as dark as I go? No, I can't go dark. Oh, there's one, well, there's a lot of boxes. I do have some with boxes where I feel like I'm all boxed in. I have that one where I'm just all boxed in. I can't get out. But even with those boxes, you will see, like I said, a little opening. So I always have hope. I don't know. That's who I am. You, you got to get out of there somehow. I'm going to go look. But this one to me is a little bit more angry and maybe it's 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 that red, you know, and the the, well, the, the red and the black being so the black. Yes. Um it's it's more instead of anger, I would say it's passion. Yeah. This was me painting totally and utterly intuitively. Um the other things were more thought out. This is a very fun practice um and hard. This was me listening to the Rolling Stones loud and just going, just painting and big strokes and not thinking and, 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 and really not looking at what I was doing until I stepped away. And I probably um, walked up to this painting maybe two or three times over a few months to finish it. Um, but yeah, you'll see the lines there. You'll see there's a lot going on over there, but yeah. it was, 
that's a, that's actually a fun painting, but a very passionate painting because I was passionate and excited about this new thing that I had found that I really connected to. So then so, this, the last one, the one so, on the, go ahead. I was gonna bring this one up because we're over here and also it's, you know, it's similar to the one we looked at before, but this one literally is titled, Get Me Out of Here. Yeah, I wanna talk about this one. Okay, this is probably the darkest. So, okay, good. So you see there's like, there's tons of boxes. There's always like, but they're like little houses too. Then you have ladders. You'll see a bunch of ladders if you, well, you see one quite uh, significant and prominent here. Um, like, can I climb out of here? Can I get out of here? You know, I don't want to be in here. I want to get out. There are little houses. It's almost like a little city um, right. where people are stuck. This is about being stuck, but being stuck with really happy colors. <laughs> yeah, because it's I know, like, yeah. I know this also has some personal significance to you as well, because you're located, for those that don't know, you're in South Florida. You're yes. outside of Florida and your daughter in New York City, and yes. you haven't been able to see each other. And so um, this has sort of like a city vibe to it as well, like yes. the buildings and shapes and um, yeah. It's funny that you say that this is, there's a lot of New York in a lot of my stuff since COVID. Um, and you see right here, if you stay where you're at, the four little dots, the four black um, dots there on the right of my screen anyway. You will see in every single one of my paintings for, like I said, something, and they are for the four members of my family. Did I say that already? Um, no, I, I don't think we did. I know we've talked about it, but I don't know if you right. mentioned it. Um, so, okay, if you yeah. look here, you'll also see on the very right, four lines, white and black, one, two, three, four, right? Yep. Then you go next to it, more to the left, and you see four dots there. Right. Then, and you know, you're gonna go through my paintings and see tons of, okay, you see this box right here on the left of the screen? Yeah. Do you see the little opening? Yes. Aha. And a lot of my works are mazes as well. A lot of people will come in and I'll say, start here and see if you can get out. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. We have a bunch of questions, so I'm well, gonna speak have them. Yeah, so. Um, Keith, this is fun. I'm glad it's fun. I want this to be fun. And I want to remind people watching on Zoom that if you want to be part of the fun, other than just typing in your questions, which we love and we appreciate, and we're going to get to all of them, um, let me know if you want to be on video with us. Just oh, I would love that. And that would be fun too. So we have um, another question from, uh, this is from someone, MSG27, says, hi, Jackie, do you get any requests to portray a person or a subject in your work? No, can I get, hold on, can I get this, let's see. Okay, got it. Um, oh, like a commission to do a person or a subject. Yeah. No, I've done commissions. Um, I can do the essence of someone. Um, I don't like to paint too literally because I don't think that way. I think in an abstract way. I'm like yeah. an idea person, not a detail person. So that would be very, very difficult for me. And maybe one day I can learn how to do that, yeah. but it's not today. Yeah, it's not today. And it's not your thing, at least right no, now. It's not yeah. my thing, right. So we have um, another question from um, Fabio. Okay. He wants to know, how does your art change if you are at home or in the studio or does it at all? Does it matter where you are? Well, the only, the only time that I paint at home was when I just started and I moved and I have this amazing studio now. Um, and then when the quarantine hit, I brought everything home. So yes, my art changed at home. I painted a hell of a lot more because I was stuck at home. Yeah. That's how it changed. And then of course the quarantine, we talked about how it got very tight. And um, I think in the studio, I'm able to be a bit freer. Because to be honest, here in the house, I, my paintings are so big, I put them on the easel. I live in a mid-century home, which doesn't have the high ceilings. The whole ceiling has all these colors on it. So the husband, you know, isn't so happy with me. The terrazzo floors are covered, the walls are covered. I think I'm a little more comfortable painting at the studio. 
Yeah. And you know, they have here, I didn't have to give the husband, you know, a, um, a security deposit. Right. And there, I, hear, I have to give a security deposit, so I'm cool. Yeah, and I hear you've had some trouble with, with getting paint in your car as well, going back and forth, so. Yes, yes, and my hair and everything. Paint everywhere. Uh, we have a few comments back when we were looking at that piece, um, Get Me Out of Here, from Lori. She said, while there is dark energy, the bright pulls you in. Um, you know, she wanted to hear more about the story, but she also sees like abstract bridges in that piece. There are some bridges in there. Yep, yep. Well, you know, it's like a it's like a Where's Waldo kind of a thing. Yeah. Because I want people to like interact with it. I want people to look at it for more than a sec. Whether they, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, no matter how they feel, try to see, you know, get a vibe, get to see if you can see what's happening. Yeah. So let's look at some more. We're gonna go back in and take a peek. We were talking about New York. There's a yes. piece here on the side that has New York in the title, and this one is New York Nights. And yes. this is a good example, I think, of, this is a, a more mixed media work. You have ink and charcoal as well. But just look at all the layers and layers and layers that you have in these works. Yeah, if you can, that's about the, um, the depth of the city. And the closer you get, and, and I have so many different types of inks and everything on this. This is probably kind of about 14 to 16 layers of paint on it. It's really wow. thick. Um, and this is the depth of the city. This is the uh, pulsating, the, the nightlife of the city and, you know, the people and the culture. And yeah, I mean, I love, this is all the textural elements of the city that I love so much. And, and that brings the one right next to it. that's also urban gorilla yes that's urban gorilla i love that one um that's about graffiti in an urban city um and let's go to urban gorilla i mean this one you have almost like shadows in the work you have different layers and layers of colors um you know the shadows are spray paint Okay. Yeah, through like a cheesecloth to make them really light. Right. You know, so it's not a very dark, um, you know, it's not so obvious, but it's definitely spray paint. There's also white spray paint in there. Um, you know, mm -hmm. urban gorilla. Go ahead. Well, I was just gonna point out the four dots next to your signature. Oh, there you go. Yeah. And I just signed them like Jackie. Jackie did it. Um, so it's obviously urban. And gorilla is like anti, you know, it's kind of about the democracy in which we're living right now. So I came up with, without saying too much, urban gorilla. Yeah. And I have two very large ones like this. And you'll see up here going across the striations with my hands of four up at the top. And the ones where right. you see three, there was four at one time, they were painted over. Yeah, I was gonna say this one at first glance looks at three, but then you can, if you look closer, you see You'll that see. four. And there's also a box there and so forth. And this is about, this is, there's a lot of fire in this. There's a lot of burnt, I made like burnt elements, like a city burning. And that's why I did the, uh, the spray paint that way. And the yellow we and red. Yeah, we have some more questions from Sharon. Um, she says, hi, Jackie, it's wonderful to see your work. Hi. You're an inspiration. One day I may be as abstract, but for now I'm the detail lady. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Oh my gosh, that's Sharon, one of my favorite people. Ask her to ask me a question. What does she want to know? Well, that's what, oh yeah, she, that was a statement, not a question. So I don't know, Sharon, ask us. Do you want to know, Sharon? Let's see if she comes up with something. Lori said, um, I believe when we were talking about Urban Gorilla, she said, that's a great title. I want to show the work that's behind me. Okay. Um, well, because this sort of is different from the themes that we've been talking about. And that is an ode to another master that you didn't yes. mention. 
but it's kind of hard not to be inspired by this when you're talking about bold color and composition. And this is Ode to Monet. Yes. Okay, so these, this is like my interpretation of water lilies in an incredibly abstract form with the colors and the reflection and so forth. And as I was doing it, I was so excited because, um, you know, it just felt so good because the piece is so humongous, the real, the piece, the Monet's yeah. piece is so humongous. And like, for me, I'll never forget those colors. So I just wanted to put them on canvas so I could have a little piece, <laughs> you know, of something that reminded me of the masterpiece uh, of his water lilies. So that's that, yeah, obviously pre-COVID. I'm gonna call that PC. <laughs> Lori also says, um, that's a brilliant truth. I think when we were talking about uh, the, the more urban pieces, spend time with your triggers. Do you have any art fears about the art process or the art world right now? No fears about the process. About the art world, yes. Um, if people aren't you, Keith, they're in trouble. In this particular point in time. Yeah. Um, I was very not afraid, but very disappointed. I had some really, really cool, very exciting things. As time goes on, things are getting a little bit bigger for me and more exciting and the uh, expectation of attendance is greater. And, um, just some really cool things that I had to, you know, obviously not go forward with. Um, so it wasn't a fear. It was like, a, it was, it's a disappointment. Um, so just waiting for the time in which we can go back to a gallery setting, to a museum setting and so forth. Yeah. But then again, we're lucky to be able to do this virtually. Yeah. You're I very, mean, very lucky to continue. So it's almost like not a fear. What I've been doing is I'm doing a talk show with my friend Jill. It's called Jack and Jill, Art, the art and culture tell all. So what we're doing, and this has to, this has to do with uh, Jill's question, is we're talking, it's for artists, and we're talking to artists about during this pandemic, it's gonna change for artists. And yeah. how are we gonna ride that change and be successful during this time? And so what we're doing is we're having art consultants on and we're having um, curators and marketing directors, people like you are gonna be on our show and so forth. So it's not a fear, it's how to actually look at the new reality and make it work for artists. So it's difficult, but it's not, it's doable. Yeah, it, I mean, there's gonna be differences, there's gonna be a transition, but something will emerge out of it no matter what. So yeah, we have, um, sort of along these lines, Lori also asked, do you have any visions for a year from now with your work? Like, how is it going to evolve? Or do you have a particular direction that you're trying to go in? And- Good question. Good question. Okay, so this is um, abstraction. Then the movement abstract expressionism is much more, I realize that I paint very, um, I'd like to learn how to paint in a more loose fashion. Try to learn how to use my brushes differently. And it's funny that she says that because I do give myself a year. I think it'll be a year. Um, I've started to practice. I've worked with calligraphy so that I can have, you know, I've worked, I've been working on it, Lori, actually. So that is my goal is to um, have even more movement. Yeah. Um, my paintings um, instead of boxes. Maybe I could throw a circle. The only circle I have in any of my paintings is that one in the corner. One of the first ones I ever did. I, I yeah, yeah. I like sharp angles. So as a segue into another question, Sharon had a question for you, and this goes along with your process. Do you plan your work before you begin? No. The only thing I plan is my color palette. Um, I usually pick the biggest size canvas and then work down. Um, sometimes I'll work on multiple canvases at the same time, let them dry, work on this, da-da-da. Right. 
you know, I'll have many different palettes happening and a lot of water spraying so that everything stays fresh. Um, but I have an idea of what I want to say. And the only thing that is really, it's intuitive, but it's also being mindful, like I said, of aesthetic and composition and so forth and trying to get my point across with my color palette and my techniques. I use a lot of very um, unusual tools to paint with. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute, but we have another question from Diane. Um, that says, hi Jackie, love your passion and work and thanks for sharing it. I love the depth and dimension to your work. When she paints, she worries about destroying some good results or effects that she achieves. Does this come into play in your process? You know, when you're adding and subtracting, do you worry about subtracting something that you shouldn't have? Yeah, it happens all the time, but there's something called a happy surprise, okay? And I try to say, oh, what a happy surprise. You know, and I'm all upset. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow, this gives me an opportunity to, you know, yeah, you got to talk yourself through that one. But yes, okay. it happens all the time. But you just, you know what? I always say, it's just paint. Just paint. It could have been great, but guess the next thing could be great. You got to psych yourself out of that and just keep on going. Yeah, that's part of your your key happy, to surprise. happy and positive. So, yeah. okay. For sure. It was a good I, question. Yeah, it's a great question. I'm going to go back into your exhibition now, and we're going to take a tour around this piece here. We're going to take a closer look at the many, many layers of my mind, now that we're talking about your process and your positivity, there's a lot going on in this piece. And it, it, this piece reminds me of your process, how you clearly see almost sections of the painting that have been ripped away yeah. from, from the other layer. Yeah, if there was one piece to show my process, you're 100% correct, this would be the one. Um, what this is, is a painting with about three other paintings on top. It's done with, I came up with my own Molotov cocktail of cement, joint compound, and a couple of other things. And I'm like a witch's brew and I do that up. So when you take a painting that's finished, I applied my mixture for lack of a better word. And, um, and then I painted over that. And then I start, you know, scraping with different types of cool tools, whether it be a light sanding, whether it's pulling. So you have the painting on top and the bold colors and underneath you have green, white, black, and yellow. And so the texture in this is, is, is pretty fantastic. And it weighs a bit too. That's why I include shipping with this one because <laughs> this is really heavy. Yeah, this is, and, and this is on a canvas as well. Cause I know yes. none of the work this exhibition are on wood, but you do a lot of wood uh, work on wood, and probably yes. for that reason, you, you have so many layers of, of thickness. Um, it's probably really tough for the canvas to to hold up. Yes, I have to be very, very. Um, it's like you know, you have to play. You have to get the right. This has to be thin in certain areas, thicker in other areas, um, and stretch just just right in order to uh, stand the test of time. Yeah, I, I, I'm digging that one. Yeah, I wanna pop over to this one next to it because this one in a lot of ways, Can I sometimes look a little simple. Uh, this is blackout. Yeah, I'll tell you about this one. Okay, I've never had done a painting like this before. So, Usually, you know, I'm adding whatever, blah, blah, blah. This, I did a painting, didn't care for it, then took black and went in, and instead of adding, I'm subtracting, subtracting with the dark colors, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm taking the black and going in, and then going around and making, like some people, oh, and you can see a person here. A lot of people look at my work and see a lot of people and dogs and whatever, but, um, so this, I just did it a kind of backwards way. And it looks like it's on wood. You see the red and black here? That's a right. very hard effect to get, red, black, and the little bit of blue with the striations and dots. Yeah, 
just a different technique. And I like it. But you know what happens, Keith? I can't do it again. I do something, I love it like that, the last one with the cement and everything. You know how many times I've tried to recreate that? I've got three drying at my studio now. I don't think it's gonna work. It take, it's very difficult. Yeah. When it comes I mean, to abstraction to, to, to get a series going. Right. Have people asked you to reproduce something that you've, that they saw that you sold and you're like, uh, that's not gonna happen. No, it can't happen. I mean, yeah. um, if they prefer, say, this style over like an urban gorilla or the uh, oracle or something like that, then I can say, yes, I can do something in this, this style. I right. will create it for you. You decide whether or not you like it. But don't you bring me your pillows from your, the cushion of your couch. <laughs> I'm not matching. I don't play that game. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. We do, have, we do have a patriotic work that I'll point out, especially since we're heading into our- July 4th. Fourth yeah, we have a red, white, and oh so blue. Mm -hmm. So this <laughs> is a good example of picking, like you said, you plan the colors ahead of time. Sure. So you say, I'm gonna work with red, white, and blue and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Yes, this was, I'm going to work with red, white, and blue for a reason. Because I'm the colors of our flag, obviously. And they used to be red, white, and blue. And now they're red, white, and I'm oh so damn blue. Okay? And you'll see a lot of navy, and you'll see a lot of dark blue. And it makes me oh so blue. When I think of, you know, you know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. <laughs> we have, a, have um, some comments, you know, again, fabulous title. Uh, you're amazing, loving the work. That's so nice. Yeah. Love it. Um, Leonardo Trinidad. Yes, Leo. Yeah, oh. I love how unique, Jackie's creations, how unique are. your creations are. Oh, I love how cre uh, unique that, that, that man, that little man is. He's unique, wonderful. That's very nice. Oh, we have this on Facebook? Yes, this is also on Facebook. People are watching live on Facebook. And after the broadcast, it will remain on Facebook. Um, people will be able to watch it over and over again. And I will also Put this in your exhibition homepage so people will be able to find this video when they visit your exhibition and it'll also be on our youtube channel and you know we'll do all sorts of fun stuff with it we'll Wonderful. Like a, a rap version or something or a rock version we'll auto tune you know we'll do something all right <laughs> <laughs> we'll, you know, but that's part of the fun thing that we get to do as a virtual museum is we will also be creating special content where we will be inside of your exhibition and talking about the pieces. We will also do other little process videos and share when you're doing um, some of your paintings in process. So we have all sorts of fun things that we can do uh, now that we have you. Um, let me go back in. Um, oh, we have another comment from Anne saying, Jackie's amazing, loving the work. Thank you, Anne. Anne Phils. Oh, Anne Phils, it's so nice. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you, Leanne. Yeah. So we're going to go back in, and I want to show one of my favorite pieces. Oh. Probably know which one it is. Oh, I'm taking the long way. This one's sort of different in your process here mm -hmm. because this work. We're talking about power of the feminine. You actually have created somewhat of a collage. You've included yes. other elements to the piece in addition to your paint and, and media material, uh, medium material. Mm -hmm. So talk about this one for us. Tell us what's going on with this work. Okay, let's, okay. Um, in my new gallery, I'm an art serve in Fort Lauderdale on Sunrise uh, Boulevard. Um, it's a beautiful space and it is, 
all glass in the front and it overlooks the art serve gallery, which is quite, quite large. And as I'm painting, I face the window and I get to look out at the beautiful gallery in the works. They were having a feminism show. And I'm staring at it, I'm staring. I said, yes, my work says something. But when, what can I really say in an abstract work? And I said, I really want to say something about the power of women. And so I did. And um, yeah. this is how I created with papers and uh, museum quality papers that I, I created myself um, and ink and a little bit of charcoal, mostly acrylic. Um, I, th I think there's some sand there, some kind of granules. You know, I use coffee, all kinds of things. And then you have like the, you know, pink power. Yeah. It was kind of powerful and kind of cool. And never have I ever done anything like that, but I was very inspired by what I was looking at every single day for weeks and weeks on a time. And I said, you know, I wish I could do something that could say something specifically to this topic. And so that's how this became to be. Fantastic. We have a, a comment from Lori saying, love this collage element. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's really cool to incorporate in, in the way that you did it. It doesn't overwhelm the painting, but it has a, a very specific message. Yeah. Okay, we have some more questions from Diane. Do you ever stare at a canvas and not know what you want to create? Yes. So you want to know what I do, Diane, or you're just, you're just curious? No, she wants to. <laughs> Diane's my friend. Diane wants to know and not know what to do. Absolutely. I have a canvas in the, um, in the studio right now. So what do I do? I just, I, I literally throw paint. That's what I call it. Throwing paint. Pick your pick three colors, throw paint, use a trowel, use paper clips, use branches. You just like put something on the canvas because it can't be blank. Okay. And then at least you have something. Then, you know, make different strokes, big, little, whatever. You know, you're just, you're making, you know, oh, Anne's saying something too. Um, you just got to get something on that canvas. Yeah. And then if you stand back and it's a mess, at least you have something to work with. Right. You know, it's bad, and now you could try to make something better. Um, but I always have to get just something on the canvas immediately. Yeah. So uh, from Anne, she asked, how do you decide what colors you want to use ahead of um, starting? A lot of times the way I'm feeling, a lot of times the music I'm listening to. Um, yeah, it's like, what are my, my fit? Okay. So here's what I do. So say like behind you, I'm picking that periwinkly kind of a purpley blue. I say to myself, what color do I crave? What color do I want to put next to that color? What color is really going to make that color stand out and rock? And I do that all around the canvas um, as I'm creating, whether they be objects or buildings or lines or squares or whatever. And so it's about color craving. And then I'll add that to my palette and add that and it just goes from there. Okay, so we have another question from Leonardo. How does fashion influence your creations? Oh, nice. That's a good question. Um, well, I'm probably the least fashionable person I've ever been now that I'm a painter. <laughs> um, you know, there was a while there that I was painting uh, Pucci, Pucci colors, Pucci, everything was like Pucci. And I, I didn't know why I was attracted to those colors. And then it dawned on me, oh my God, this is all Pucci shapes and Pucci da da da. And then I strayed away from that. And honestly, I would say at this point, no. Yeah. After I went through that, no. Oh, done it, been there, I'm, I'm, no. Oh, that looks good in there. Yeah. That has a frame on it. They all look good in rooms. Jill wants to know if the colors of Florida influence you. Well, if the colors in Florida are light and bright, yes. Um, the colors of happiness, the colors of um, fun, just um, bright, light, 
levity. Like, look at this behind you. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Yee, whippy! Yeah. Life's, a, life's a party over here. Yeah. It's like the, the title should be Life is Good because life is good. And so that's why all of these color combinations tend to air on the side of um, wild, bright. I think they reflect my personality a little bit, you know, upbeat. Yeah. And yeah. Do you, out of the works that are in this exhibition, do you have a favorite? Oh my God, yes. My favorite is actually my husband coming right now with, hold it. Oh, wait, on an urban gorilla tray. Ah, yes. Glass of champagne. Fabulous. I was waiting for the champagne to show up. I was trying to be, I was trying to be good. Yeah. Okay, so with all of, please ask me again. Ask you the same question? Please. Okay. With so, all of the things in the exhibition? Yeah, all of the works in the exhibition, what it, do you have a favorite one? Urban gorilla. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so the so okay. So the gallery's burning. Which one am I gonna grab? Right. The, the many layers of my mind. The many layers of yeah, that's a good one to grab. That was tough. That was tough. And that was it was a feat. It was one of those ones that when you were done, you were like, and I feel that way about Urban Gorilla. I was like, wow, I really appreciated it, you know. Yeah. Another question from uh, Fabio. We know that you love the Rolling Stones. You talked about that, but are there other music that you listen to? Other inspiration? Yeah. I listen to a lot of Van Morrison, Bob Dylan. Um, then I will listen to also to classical music, a lot of violin, um, a lot of violin, a lot of classical when I was doing that Ode to Monet and a lot of other pieces that look like that that are in that collection of that time when I was painting. Um, and that's about it. Because what I do, and I feel bad for the people that work around me, is when I tell you I listen to the Rolling Stones, it's over and over and over ad nauseum to where, you know, I'm like a crazy person. It's like, I just have to hear those beats. They, they get me going, they get me in a mood. Yeah. You know, my body moves in a certain way when you listen to it. You paint differently when the music is really quite terrific. Got it. Yeah. And you can see the movement and the passion in these paintings. Um, Lori says, that's why I love you so much. I repeat songs. <laughs> that's so great. Yeah, so let me go in and do one more little tour around the, uh, the muse, the exhibition. We do have a few more questions coming in, but um, we're gonna wrap it up soon, but I wanna give everyone another little peek and remind everyone to check out your exhibition, go in, explore, take your time, go through the works, click on the pieces, get really close up. You can get closer to these works than you can if they were in a physical space and it's okay. Hey, if you touch your screen, you're not going to get into trouble. Although I know I will point out, Jackie, that you love for people to touch your work. Oh, yes, because yes. Um, and some people won't do it. Um, I had that exhibition at Art Fort Lauderdale because I worked for so long. We're having to unbox paintings and install works myself. I always had to wear gloves. And, you know, there would be a sculpture or something. No one's looking. I'm trying to pet the sculpture. You know, you want to feel things. I'm very much, you know, that person. And so I have covered my pieces with materials that you can touch them. You, you won't get prints on them. You can feel the texture of them and you're not going to ruin them. So yes, everything can be touched and played with and yeah. Because I never could that I wanted to create paintings that you could walk up and touch. But it's funny how a lot of people, it's like writing in a book, they won't do it. We have another question from someone that I think you know, Hannah. <gasps> my Hannah, my who I love. That's my daughter, Hannah from New York. I'm about to tell you what her question is. She wants to know 
the fastest time it took you to complete a painting and the longest time? She's such an intellectual, my child. What a question. <laughs> she must be gifted. Um, okay, so the shortest period of time would have been six hours, maybe. Longest period of time, months. Months. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the big question that Hannah from New York has, huh? That's the big question. <laughs> you know, so it says hi. Hi, babe. You know, she's the one that got me to paint. Really? Yes, and she's the one that got me to open my first business. She is the conduit for all great things in my life, my child. That's she gave true. me the money to open my first business, her bat mitzvah money, and then when it came to this, she took me, we, rainy Sunday afternoon, we started playing with paints. What are we gonna do? It was her idea. And from then on, that's it. I walked out of my business. That's it, I just started painting. It's all about the Hannah. It's all about the, well, thank you, Hannah. Yes, for, my dreams for, come true. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, I think we're getting close to the end of our time. I want to remind everyone again how to access your exhibition, An Imitation of Life. Go to Jackie's page in the Toro Siete Museum of Contemporary Art directly by going to jackie.torosiete.museum. You can access the 3D version of the museum uh, exhibition and we are going to be issuing another version of this exhibition in the next few days that will allow you to see these works in the rooms that I've been displaying behind me. So you'll be able to look at detailed photos of the works, see what they look like in these rooms that we've created for them. And also to remind you that all of the works in this exhibition are for sale in our museum gallery store at shopjackie.torosiete.museum. I love it. I'm getting so many um, little texts saying, oh my God, I love that guy at Tor Toro Siete. He's so great. Uh, well, thank you. I got thank three you. of those in a row. Well, thank you everyone for watching. Thank you, thank Jackie. You. For being with us and we'll do this again. We'll check in and, and Ferdinand says hello and he sends ah. his love and thank you again. It was a pleasure, wonderful to spend this time with you this evening. Thank you so much. Thank you, Keith. Thank you everyone for watching. Take care, bye-bye. Bye-bye.